What you're looking at here is an excerpt from a real ransomware negotiation. This is a conversation that actually happened between the operators of Lockbit, an infamous ransomware group, and a victim whose files has been encrypted. Oh, give me a heart attack. I'm just an IT guy working in the company. My family depends on my job. $40,000 is my six-year salary. To which, of course, the ransomware says your company will pay. The reason I have access to this chat log is because somebody managed to hack the Lockbit ransomware group. And this entire chat gives us really deep insight into how these ransom negotiations are carried out. But most importantly, it tells us a lot about why people pay in a lot of these cases, why these cyber criminals gangs succeed in getting money from people. It also shows us the variations in conversation that happen. And of course, SOB stories have no effect on the ransom operators. I guess that's not a surprise. I mean, these are criminals after all. And this case, the guy is offering to pay a thousand dollars and the asking price is about fifty thousand so this negotiation doesn't really end well you can see they just uh, end up ghosting him in the end but there are of course more practical examples of where this can kind of work companies claim to already be bankrupt or in a bad situation i'm not sure if this is just a negotiation strategy that everybody tells the ransomware operators this or if this is actually close to the truth or a lot of the companies who do get penetrated it is because they don't have the resources to invest in proper defenses and a lot of the times that is because the company isn't making that much money to begin with but as you can see in almost every case negotiations do work so in this case the price has gone down to 30k already only for you it will be 30k i won't do discounts again but don't delay i might change my mind but of course they continue to negotiate they also do provide considerable tech support and the procedure for decrypting files, how to use their tools and so on. They also seem to have a lot of detailed infrastructure in terms of how they run this thing. So they have their own file sharing platform. They have their own documentation. They have different people or different departments, different people doing the tech support or the actual decryption versus different people doing the ransom negotiations in the chat. Another interesting fact is the vast differences in the prices asked. So here they are offering to decrypt somebody's files for only $4,000. And I think that gives us an insight into why they are so successful and why people decide to pay these cyber criminals. It's because they're very pragmatic. The cyber criminals know how much money they are worth and they extract just that much. And in a lot of cases, they are actually charging people less money than they would have to invest to do a proper network forensic or endpoint investigation. Now, a lot of you who just use Windows Defender or Free AV may not understand this, but at the business level, cybersecurity is very expensive. A single penetration task done by a professional company can cost 15,000 or more in US dollars. And if we look at some of these conversations, that is how a lot of people actually interpret such cyber incidents. Here's a company that says they managed to acquire the amount of money that was requested and the conditions for their payment is give us a tool to decrypt all our files, provide technical support from your side in case something doesn't work, promise you will never attack us in the future, help us understand how we can prevent such incidents and explain how you managed to get in our infrastructure structure along with technical details. When we have your replies, we will proceed with the payment. So to the question, they said, yes, we will provide you with a decryptor. You will need to disable your AV and just run the EXE. The fact that they shouldn't be attacked again, they said it could be someone else. And then how were you hacked? Well, we know your password, which is password with just an at the rate and a zero instead of O. <laughs> now, I've also seen cases where people have tried to game the ransomware operators and get them to decrypt some important data. And unfortunately, again, they do their research. It's very hard to get around them or trick them into anything. Somebody asked them to decrypt only very few files, specific files, and they said they only decrypt files for free at random. So even
even if they say we can decrypt two or three files, they are not going to accept if those are the two or three most important files that they have encrypted. They will ask for a partial payment or some price for that. But again, like I said, they're very pragmatic. They know exactly how much the thing costs to you. And that I would say is the real skill that the ransomware operators have. It's not necessarily running the decryptor, but knowing who to attack and knowing exactly how much money they will be willing to pay to get that system back. They know the worth of the data that they have. People have tried to threaten, hey, look, we're not going to pay anyway. We might pay you 10 grand. But uh, if they know that this is a large company and they can pay 30,000, they're not going to move on that position very much. So they do budge, they do negotiate, but they're very good at knowing the cost they can realistically extract. So in some cases, it can be 4,000. In some cases, it can be 50,000. It does vary greatly. From what I've seen in the chat logs, they've never really lied to somebody about anything. In fact, they say we will never cheat our customers and they even offer piecemeal services. So 6,000 to decrypt the data. But if you want intrusion paths and protection suggestions, a USD of 10,000 must be paid, pricing themselves as a pen testing company. So even though they're cyber criminals, they do definitely price and operate as a lot of businesses. And in a lot of cases, their prices are quite low. In practical terms, a lot of times people are forced to pay them because there's no better alternative. It is the easiest and cheapest way of getting the problem over with. Hopefully this gives you some insight into how ransom where operators work, how these negotiations happen behind the scenes. It's very interesting to read. Credit to whoever managed to hack Lockbit and expose all of this. I also love this um, takedown website that they used. Don't do crime. Crime is bad. From Prague. I don't think Lockbit's going away, but it is super fun when cyber criminals get a taste of their own medicine. Now, another way to see what's going on in the heads of cyber criminals is to explore the dark web using a platform like Flare. We've done a search for ransom leaks over illicit networks, black market forums, ransom leaks, infected device logs, and of course, emerging sources like ransomware files. What's interesting is you will often see listings on these sources where hackers are claiming to have logins and passwords of different individuals. So a lot of the times when ransomware authors or cybercrime gangs attack a company, it's not necessarily one gang doing everything. They may have found a login or password being sold on the dark web, and that may be their starting point. It's not uncommon to even have telegram chats where uh, people are selling these login credentials online. You can see a long list of uh, entries here. This is also how a lot of the ransomware gangs make their money is they're going to leak or sell the data that they get from these companies. If they don't pay the ransom, they're going to leak it on the dark web. The main thing, of course, is paying attention to the the login credentials. Anything that's associated with your identity, if you've got an infected device and it's already reported, hackers have that information, somebody could use it to infiltrate your company. I want to thank Flare for providing us access to their platform. They're a sponsor of this video and a longtime sponsor of this channel. So if you want to kind of explore what kind of footprint you have on the dark web, if you may have been affected by an info stealer or cybercrime or malware component that might have your email or your password exposed, there. You can do a simple search of your own email over here and it's going to tell you what kind of um, information is out there on you. So it's a super useful tool if you're looking to protect yourself. And they do have a dashboard where you can check if there are any incidents affecting your company. And if any of your employees may have their credentials leaked somewhere, you can put in your own sensitive data and scope, and it's going to tell you if any critical assets are affected. And as you saw, you can use it to do a global search across the entire internet and dark web. So show them some love for supporting the channel. Check them out using link in description. You can try them out for free. It'll be down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Do like and share this video if you enjoyed it. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.